and sit down. Hello, 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 and this is Andy from Big Mac's Workshop, and today we are doing the Tau Piranha. Uh, something I've never actually painted at all, I've never painted any Tau, so this was a, a bit of an experiment for me. Uh, so, I am starting off with a black base as always, and the base coat, what is going on now, is a couple of thin layers of Misfit Green by Scale 75. Uh, I wanted a sort of a, a very sort of camo sort of patterned um, colour color palette, but I messed it up, uh, so it finished up being just a, a green. I was going to do uh, an actual DPM on it, but uh, what I forgot was that you put um, some of the markings on early, so uh, you get the base layer underneath as well. So only after a, a few coats of this Misfits Green, um, We've got a nice uh, base layer to work with, and it's a really nice colour. Uh, we then work, uh, work up with uh, Sick Green, which is the Leo Game Air, uh, and I'm using that on the uh, raised areas. I'm not going underneath because, uh, well, you don't see the underneath bit. Um, so I'm, I'm hitting just the raised areas, the upper upper sides, uh, the top panels along with um, edges, all that sort of thing. And I'm bringing up them. Uh, that colour, nice and gentle, a couple of thin layers, just uh, really working that, um, that colour tone onto the top, so it gives you a nice transition. After the uh, Misfits Green, I then go on to a Moot Green, which is Games Workshop, and it's a very bright contrasting colour, which is a really cool thing what you can do with an airbrush, it's a lot harder to do by hand, uh, that's just by going up, uh, and what you can do is just go to a, a real high colour. Uh, of whatever you want to use, you just really start blending that, um, that colour uh, right right up. And the cost you're putting such thin layers on, um, you can really go to town with it and uh, start throwing the uh, darker and the lighter shades in, and really getting the uh, colour blends really, really nice. And as you can see, I'm just focusing on all, all the uh, upper re uh, reached areas. Getting some really cool, um, vibrant transitions on the uh, model itself. So yeah, I'm, got, uh, um, I'm bringing back the uh, Misfits Green again. I'm just shading uh, certain areas just to make them transitions look a lot nicer, a lot more smooth. And throw some um, depth into the uh, shadowed areas as well. And it's just uh, such a cool thing you can do with an airbrush. It's just uh, bring it, put it like I said earlier, just putting the layers up and down. Uh, really uh, allows you to bring the colours together. So next bit is uh, I'm just uh, blacking out the uh, cab uh, as far as going to be. Um, I'm going to be putting some uh, nice colourful uh, sections into the cab. Uh, the crew are painted in the um, same colours as the. Uh, uh, Piranha itself, um, as I wanted them to look uh, kind of uniform uh, with the vehicle itself. I'm just getting the uh, black, obviously thin coats as always, you want a nice uh, even base where you work, uh, what you're working. And onto the uh, crewman, I've gone for um, German Red Brown for the, uh, off, uh, for the uh, secondary colour on the um, on the models, which is just uh, the cloth work really. So uh, on these particular models, it's really just the arms. Uh, most of their stuff's armoured um, on the town models. So just to break up that, um, that flat green, uh, just to add a, a little bit more um, variation to the model itself. And onto the metal work was a base of, as always, um, metallic um, black. Uh, by Vallejo uh, model air uh, colours. Uh, that was uh, gone through all the uh, grills, um, the engine uh, sections, etc. Just to get that um, baseline that we can work with. But, uh, I've done something a little bit different on these uh, metals and decided to go for a few more colours on them uh, than I normally would do. So uh, once the, uh, once the um, black metal's down, 
I then go up to Vallejo Model Colors uh, Oily Steel uh, as a first highlight, uh, nice broad sections of the uh, highlights uh, using uh, using Oily Steel as I'm going to go um, for two or three more layers uh, with the uh, various metal colors. The next one is uh, Vallejo's uh, Game Color uh, Chainmail. Uh, which is a slightly bit brighter, a slight brighter than oily steel, but it's still very, very dark. So I'm bringing them layers up really, really slowly. Um, obviously, I'm still work, uh, working on the underneath as well, but I'm bringing them um, highlights together really slowly. And once I've uh, got the uh, chain mail down, I'm going to put a non oil wash into all the recesses of the. Uh, metal work as well, uh, just to uh, bring them colours together. Uh, sometimes it gives you nice shading with uh, washes. Sometimes you can use it to uh, bring uh, bring them uh, bring the colours together as well. It's really really um, a useful tool to use a wash. Um, sometimes it's better to use it later on in the uh, paint job, as it allows the uh, colours to uh, blend in really nicely to each other. The next one, uh, final uh, highlight, is. Uh, Vallejo Model Air's Chrome, which is usually my top highlight. It's pretty much the brightest silver I own, um, and I tend to use it for top highlights for any kind of silver work. It's just such a nice colour, it's really bright, and quite a blue tone to it, so you could always try and find a, a different sort of toned um, silver, but you know, um, I find you can't go wrong with, the, uh, with, uh, with Chrome. So here we go with the uh, non oil, I'm just throwing some non oil onto the uh, undersides of the drones here. Uh, I'm painting the drones at the same time as painting the rest of the fig because I want it, uh, although I'm doing them separate, I want the colours to look um, the same and look, look in the right place to go with the rest of the model. And no need. Uh, although they're, uh, they're independent, it wouldn't, it wouldn't look right for them to go a uh, bit too out of whack with the uh, colour scheme. So back on the final edge highlight, back up, uh, up with a chrome, just to pick them uh, final edges up, uh, really uh, making that um, metal work stand out against the sort of uh, the dull down um, armor. Obviously, I'm just using a side of a brush there, uh, just to get the um, highlights in in the right places. So I'm. Uh, on, onto the black again, into the crew cabinet, uh, cabin, should I say, uh, is black grey for the first edge highlight, which is scale 75. Um, if you're using uh, GW paints, eshin grey would work. I think it's eshin. That's the darkest one. Or, if, grey, yeah. yeah. And uh, if you're using Vallejo, you want to be using the Vallejo range black grey. Uh, I've just taken to using the um, scale 75 stuff for um, whatever cause I can. Uh, just I just like the stuff. On to, uh, the sort of dials, I decided to go for a sort of a red metal look, which is <clears throat> uh, hammered copper. Uh, I didn't go over the top on the um, on, on, on the metal work on the inside of a, uh, the uh, crew cap, uh, crew cab. I didn't want to um, take too much away from the rest of the model as well. But uh, I did I, I did go back to highlight it with Vallejo's gold. Um, I didn't want to go too uh, too many layers onto this because it's just a, such a minor detail. Uh, I didn't want to uh, make it look over the top and overpower uh, some of the other stuff inside. Now the thing with uh, Vallejo's gold is really really thin, so you don't need to wash um, water it down so much. So just be aware of when when you're using that, um, it is very thin. Okay, onto the uh, on the blue buttons was scale 75 Amarth blue. Uh, I, I, I found it as a very very striking colour, um, so I thought it looked real. It would look interesting on the inside of the um, crew cap, uh, just to brighten it up. And um, obviously, if you really wanted, to, if you really felt the need, you could go for some groovy OSL on the inside of the cab as well. It's not something I went for. Uh, although I was tempted, I'm not going to lie about that. The next layer is 
pure old blue, uh, another scale 75 colour. It's quite a whitey blue, um, so it's really, really bright. But because it's such a fine paint, um, it glazes over nicely, so you don't have to uh, worry if you get too much on, uh, on onto your brush. It is very, very thin, so it um, just stands out just um, just enough. And last but not least on the um, inside of the blue buttons is Fenris Grey as a top highlight, um, which you could consider a slight unusual um, choice with it being a blue, but uh, the Fenris Grey is a really, really bluey white. Um, so you can uh, throw that as a, highlight, a top highlight for a any bright blue colours and it'll look just it'll look uh, look really nice. So back onto highlighting the uh, the black sections and the second highlight on there is Eshing Grey, uh, which is a GW paint obviously. Uh, it's still very dark. Uh, GW tends to use that as their first highlight for black. I wanted to keep the highlights on uh, the interior quite uh, quite deep, rather than uh, really make them stand out in the uh, classic GW sense. And the red sections were we'll start off with Vallejo's gory red uh, for the red buttons. Uh, I tend to use two colours on buttons, um, either blue, uh, usually blue or red. Uh, it just makes the buttons stand out a little bit, uh, a little bit better uh, to each other, and uh, uh, sort of an alternating colour pattern makes it look a little bit more interesting. Now, obviously, you can put as many colours in there as you want, make it look like some kind of rainbow. It's just my personal preference. I tend to, uh, I tend to just use two, uh, uh, just to keep it simple but um, interesting. Once the uh, gory red's gone down, it is hot orange next. Now you can go quite bright with these um, highlights because they're so small areas, but um, it'll just make the, uh, as long as you keep the paint thin, it'll just make the buttons glow slightly um, differently. But you can use what, uh, you can go quite high uh, very quickly on such small areas like this. On to the, uh, Crew colours, uh, the models are now glued in, whilst I'm only highlighting the uh, red sections um, on their arms, which is gory red for the first layer, uh, just picking out the creases into the uh, arms, uh, keeping the uh, core of the uh, crew's cloth uh, quite drab, um, as it'd be some kind of uniform, uh, so you wouldn't want to be standing out too much. And the top highlight is hot orange. Again, I'm only highlighting the uh, most uh, raised areas of the uh, creases. Uh, so just to um, make them a bit more, add a little bit more life to the model itself. Edge highlights on the vehicle are kept very, very, um, Dull. I didn't want to go over the top with the edge highlights here. So I started off with Sit Green, which was, uh, if you remember, the first colour I used on the, um, for the first highlight on the uh, figure as a whole through the airbrush. And just using the flat of a brush where possible just to, um, to get the uh, nice straight edges. Keeping the, uh, keeping the edge highlights as thin as possible so they don't stand out too much, but uh, still offering that. Um, depth of colour what an edge highlight should and just to, uh, towards the uh, most inner points of the um, of the raised areas and the, uh, the corners is a, a very thin highlight of mood green uh, again well, that was the top coat of the um, airbrushing work uh, uh, it just really makes the, um, the joins and the uh, corners uh, pop really making the uh, model look like it's uh, standing standing out on parade. So at this point, it's got a, a gloss varnish on, but I'm throwing a bit of uh, weathering on, um, because that's the sort of thing I, I uh, like to do. So, as always, starting with weathering, burnt umber. Um, I'm just throwing it on there, uh, making it keep towards the centre areas of the um, 
of the hot, re hot regions. I'm also throwing some onto the uh, front of the wings, uh, where the um, heat from uh, any engine uh, sections or what have you uh, would uh, collect, and any dust would collect onto onto the front. I don't know how, exactly how technically uh, accurate that is, but it's just something I like to do. It looks good, in my opinion. Once I've uh, gone up with that, I use uh, I use a black, going straight over the top of the burnt number, uh, adds uh, some real depth to the inner areas. Um, throwing, I'm, I'm throwing some of the uh, scorching to the rear of the wings as well, next to the engine um, exhaust. Just adds a little bit more. Uh, Variety, color variety, color pattern to it, and makes it look a bit more interesting. And I'm uh, whilst I'm like that, I'm throwing some uh, magic blue onto the ends of the uh, engine sections. Now at this point, my airbrush decides it wants to uh, play uh, play silly buggers with me. <laughs> makes it a lot more difficult than it needed to be, uh, which I will not thank my airbrush for. Well, as you can see, I'm just bringing uh, some bright colors to it. After I've done that, I'll just throw some uh, magic. Terra Earth and some more burnt umber just to blend it all in and that's what you've got once I've got an oil wash on it. And there you are, that is a Tau Piranha, um, the first one I'd ever painted, I don't think uh, Dodger's done much in the way of Tau. No, he's not done anything either. So it was an in interesting uh, model for me to paint and uh, yeah, I quite enjoyed it. So I uh, hope you were enjoy um, what you've seen. If you uh, want to catch up with us uh, on, on um, any more of our videos, Hit like, hit subscribe, share with your friends, and if there's anything you want to ask us, please feel free to comment down below. Okay guys, see you in the next one. Bye bye.